Good morning, you live. Isn't it such a beautiful day to rejoice in the house of the Lord this morning? Right there we are. We want to invite you to worship with us. Let's lift up His name. Oh, we rejoice.
Come on, church, let's give God some praise. We love you, God. Thank you, God. In this song, in this song, it's saying, I will run, I will run. And it's not, it's not trying to say, I'm going to run away from God. It's saying, man, we're going to run to God. And everything, and everything that we're going through, we will still run to God. Not run away from God, because I know lots of us, we tend to want to run away from God when things are going really bad. Even when things are going really good, we tend to run from God. We say, God, this is your fault. God, this is your fault. God, I don't know why this is happening. But when we do, when we do that, we're, we're, we're endangering our heart. And in this song, it's saying, I will run to you, God. I will go to you, God. I will run to you. No matter how life is, no matter how rough life is, I will run to God. Amen. Father God, thank you so much for your love. Thank you for what's happening right now, God. I pray that you're with us and you're guiding us in this service, God. May Jesus Christ, we love you. Amen. Amen. Hey, guys, right now, take a second. Uh, get out of your seat. Say hi to someone that you've never met before. Don't say hi to the same people. Say hi to someone you've never met before. There's so many people, new people. Look at that. asking man why are we doing this i'm such an introvert i'm too close i'm too my i'm too myself a little bit too much man it's because new life we're a family right new life we're a family here and so we want to say hi to each other we want to say hi to each you know one of our families uh and so hey guys welcome to new life uh thank you so much for joining us uh my name is sammy i get the honor of being the youth uh pastor here at new life fellowship uh and if, if this is your first time here this is how new life wants to welcome you come on new life Thank you so much for choosing New Life to come out uh, and to listen to God's word together and worship together. Uh, so if this is your first time, we have some awesome, awesome Be The Teamers ready for you in our lobby in the guest center. And we have a gift for you, a special gift just for you. Um, we want to give it to you and we want to get to know you uh, and get to know who you are. Uh, at this time right now, uh, we're going to get ready with our next part of our service. And that's giving of our tithes and our offerings. And like I said, new people, this is not for you. If you want to give, please give. But just know that our church is a church that is very generous because generosity is our privilege. Our generosity is our privilege here at New Life. And we get to serve our community through your generosity. Just this last week, Pastor was talking about how there's a long line all the way to 61st Street because we were able to serve our community through our food drives. And so, come on. So there's many ways that you can give. Uh, that's either in person right now with the offering buckets. If y'all want to get ready with that with the offering buckets. And then also online if you want to scan that QR code or if you have our app through our app. Uh, and so I'm going to pray for the offering. I'm going to pray uh, that God helps us with this. God, thank you so much for uh, what you're doing with our offering. God, the generosity that is here at New Life. I pray that you are uh, multiplying it, God, that you're with them, that you're guiding us. Uh, with our generosity. Thank you for being so good to us. Because of your goodness, we're able to give back to you, God. Uh, give back to your kingdom. And we're able to give back to our community because of that, God. Uh, we thank you. We love you. And we thank you. Uh, Jesus Christ. Amen. So while those buckets are being passed around, uh, I have a couple of announcements for you guys. Uh, so New Life Youth, we have a couple of things. I have an announcement. Uh, we don't have too much of the details quite yet. But uh, Youth Camp is coming up. Uh, youth camp is a big, big thing that we do here as a church. Uh, so if you need more information on youth camp, please find me. I really want, my goal is to bring 30 to 35 students uh, to youth camp. And so, man, do, please also do not let money be an issue uh, to go to camp. Uh, there's so many testimonies. There's more, so many stories of uh, God doing something at New Life or at camp. Uh, and so, man... I encourage you, start thinking about it. Start saving a little bit uh, for camp. But like I said, do not let finances be an issue. Uh, and so that's going to be on July uh, 13th through the 17th. So mark your calendar. 
July 13th through the 17th. Uh, and so, yeah, we want you to come out. So if you want more information, find me after service. Uh, and it looks like that's it. Uh, we don't have any more announcements. And so thank you so much for joining us again. Uh, and if this is your first time, please do not forget that right after service, come find us at our Connection Center. Uh, we want to get to know you. Uh, and so thank you. If you have the app, get your app ready, get your notes ready, uh, and enjoy the rest of the service, guys. to see y'all today. Yeah. How are y'all doing? Hey, I want to give a shout out quickly. Um, I moved off the island like seven months ago and y'all didn't, didn't know who's to know. Uh, and yesterday I had to bring my wife to a meeting. So uh, we had to stop at the church. And when I get off of 60, when I'm coming down 61st, I see all these cars backed up. I said, man, it's not summer yet, and I realized it was all the people waiting in line to come to the food fair. Uh, so I said, man, how do I, they don't know me, how do I cut in line? So I, if y'all don't know, I came all the way to the back, and I did what I had to do, I took my wife. So those of you that come out every a month, thank you for all of the, uh, all of you that serve. Uh, the so the other the other uh, people I want to give a shout out to. I want to give a shout out to the men in in Husto's life group and the women in uh, Esther or Chachi's life group. Uh, some of you last week we prayed. Husto uh, lost his brother, uh, and. Uh, the people in the life groups pitched in, the men and the women, and they provided some food for the family. So thank you to Esther and Eddie. Uh, I don't know who got it wrong. I don't know if it's who still got it wrong or I got it wrong, but I think he got it wrong. So we've been, he did, right? He did? Or I did. So we've been texting, calling. I said, man, where's the funeral? Lupita and I said, let's go to the funeral together. So I move off the island. So all this time, I don't know when I heard it. I don't know when I heard it. Uh, and three times. Yeah, he said it three times. It Carnes, Carnes, Carnes. So I'm assuming Carnes are 23rd, right? Yeah. So I told my wife, hey, we got to leave to, uh, early. I got to go to the funeral. And I get there early. I get 10 minutes before 11, and, and Lupito said, hey, pastor, I got a seat for you. I said, hey, man, I'm walking in. So I park, and I see there's no cars. I said, maybe, maybe they're at the beach. I don't know, all right? So I walk in, and I don't see the chapel there at Carnes on 23rd open. I know they have a smaller chapel. I go to the restroom, and then I tell Lupito, hey, man, where y'all at? <laughs> he goes, we're on cars in Tech City. I said, that was Justo's fault. I'm playing. I said, man, y'all know what? I'm going to be the first one at the cemetery. Uh, I'm just, I mean, I can't go back and come back. So I said, so uh, we forgive you. No, nah, it was my fault. It was my fault. So we extend our condolences to, to the family and thank you. Today, I'm going to start a new series on the book of Ruth. If you have never read the book of Ruth, this is your assignment. Read it the next months, next weeks. We're going to be in the book of Ruth the rest of April in May. Um, and if you have never read the book of Ruth, I encourage you to read it. There's 66 Bibles, 66 books in the Bible, 66 books. And there are two pertaining to women. Yeah. One is Esther. She was Jewish. And this is Ruth. Ruth was not Jewish, and it's an amazing story. I'm going to tell you why it's an amazing story. When you read the book of Matthew, the first chapter it gives all the lineage of Jesus. And there are two women that appear in the lineage of Jesus. One was a former prostitute named Rahab. 
She was redeemed, and she appears as one of Jesus' great, great, great grand grandma. She was not Jewish. Rahab, a prostitute in Jericho. And the other woman that appears in, in Jesus' lineage is Ruth. Ruth with a Moabite. And I'm going to tell you everything if you don't know who the Moabites were, how she came into place. So please know, whatever season you are in life today, don't throw in the towel. There's a chapter that's coming if you don't give up. And this is, this is what we're going to learn. This is what we're going to learn because so many people give up on God, their family, their marriage, going to school, on a bit, you know, you wanted to start a business. And, and so many times we give up so quickly on, but there is another chapter that was coming. So this series is meant for two things, to encourage you, but to challenge you. And this is how I want to start this series, by asking you two questions. How do you respond when problems show up in your life? I want you to think about that. How, how do you respond? What, what are your first reactions? What are your first words that come out of your mouth when you're going through a marital problem, a financial problem, problems with your kids? Those of us that are married and had kids and they're grown from the house, you know, the parents blame the kids or the children. The children blame the kids. The dog blames everybody else. But, but, but seriously, how do you respond to life's problems in your life? As humans, every one of us will continue to face different problems in our life. So, so I want you to ask, how do you respond? Do you respond by backing away, falling away from God or running to God? In, our, in your marriage... Thursday was my 37th anniversary. And, and, and I will tell you this. There's been times when I thought the solution was to pull away from my wife. And that's not the solution. The solution is, is to sit down and talk about the problem. And let's resolve it together. Because it takes two to tango. But, but how, I want you to think about this. Those of you that are parents. Those of you that are adults. And those of you that are teenagers, 15, 16, you're in college, you're single, you're not married. It doesn't matter if you're single or married, young or old. How do you respond when problems show up in your life? Now, the truth is nobody prays for problems. We're not, I'm not going to pray. Lord, send me problems tomorrow. <laughs> no, nobody, nobody prays that. Not unless you... You really like problems. But the truth is this. Problems reveal two things. It reveals who God is. And it reveals what's inside of you. Every problem that you have ever faced is going to reveal who God really is in your life. And number two, it's, it's going to reveal. If, if I had, a, you know, if I had my, my water, what's inside that bottle is going to come out. What's inside of you, every problem is going to come out. What's inside of you is going to come out. And then for those of us that are parents, this is the second question that I want to ask you. How will you teach your children how to respond to problems in their lives? I wish we could create this bubble and create this vaccine where our kids would never have to face problems. They're going to be rejected. They're going to be laughed at. They're going to be fired. They're going to be treated unjustly. Your kids are going to go through so much stuff like you've gone through. Amen. Yeah. Sure. I wish I could protect my kids. I wish they didn't have to go through breakups. I wish they didn't have to go through uh, sinful things in their lives. I wish they could... Live this perfect life. But the truth is, as human beings, every one of us are going to face problems in life. Yes, sir. Now, yes, sir. let me say this. For many years, I responded to life's problems the way my father taught me how to respond to them. My, 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 my stepfather, 
Model to me how to respond to problems with anger, with frustration, blaming my mom, blaming everyone. And in my first years of marriage, because that's what was modeled for me, that's how I responded to problems. I would respond with anger. <laughs> Man, y'all got here when the anger issue got tamed that down a little bit. <laughs> but the truth is, mom and dad, the way you respond to problems, you are modeling to your kids how they're going to respond to problems. Take a deep breath. So this is how most of us respond to problems. There could be other ways, but these are the five ways that most people respond to problems. We tend to ignore them and pretend they're not there. For those of you that are married, as long as you continue to ignore them and pretend, your problems are not going to go away. In a month, I've had three friends that have reached out to me that they're facing divorce. Three friends. And I can tell you, it's simply because someone ignored something. They just threw it under the rug. It's better to address your marital problems while they're small instead of let, letting them grow big. Your problems in your life. Are you going to ignore them? Or are you going to pretend that they don't exist? The other way we respond is when you have a victim's mentality, you blame everyone for your problems. You, you blame your mom. I am the uh, Caleb, my son, is, is a writer. Caleb's a writer, and I found this, this meme. This girl writes a book, and the book is titled My Unhappy Life. So the parents are in line. The parents are in line because it's a meme, all right? It's not a real book. The, the parents are in line because the girl writes a book. Everything or her, her unhappy life is blaming everything on her parents. So the mom is in line, and she reaches finally where she's going to autograph, and she tells the daughter, if I knew you were going to be a writer, I would have been a better parent. Because <laughs> now she's disclosing everything. Uh, 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 everything and, and the truth is this guys as long as you continue to blame everyone for your problem instead of taking responsibilities you'll never grow and you will always have those issues in your life stop playing the blame game okay number three and this was me who Jesus we become angry frustrated and if you don't deal with your anger and your frustration it'll go into bitterness and so many people are angry at life. So many people are frustrated with life. And so many people allow problems. So this is, what I, this, is, this is what I tell people. Every problem you face and every problem I face will make me bitter or make me better. So every problem in your life, you're going to become bitter or you're going to become better. So these are the ways most people respond. And then number four, we can run from them and try to avoid them. How many of you know people that run from their problems? If you didn't say yes or not, the truth is this, guys. You and I, that's our human nature. When Adam and Eve sinned, what did they do? They ran from God. All of us think that the solution is running from our problems. So during this series, and specifically today's teaching, I want to encourage you. Do number five. Decide to run to God. Let me say that again. Decide to run to God. Every situation in your life, you can either run from God or run to God. So, so today's teaching, that, that's what I'm going to teach about. Today's teaching is don't run from your problems. Run to God. Yes. Let me say that again. I don't know who you are. Don't run from your problems. Yes. Run to God. Amen. Okay. In the Spanish service, I always say this jokingly. And they already know me. 
I asked this question. How many of you would like me to pray for you for all your problems to go away? And people raise their hand. How many of you really would like me to pray for your problems to go away? Raise your hand. Anybody? Anybody? All right. Mike. So I always say this. Lord, take them today. Let us bear them today or tomorrow. Because as long as you're alive, you're still going to have problems. You hear that? So your problems aren't going to go away. Gloria's still there. I know she's not your problem. All right? Anthony's not the problem. All right? So don't, say with me, don't run. Tell the person next to you, don't run from your problems. Run to God. Every situation in your life, you're either going to run from God or you're going to run to God. So this is my teaching. This is my teaching. Run to God when times are evil. Look, we're living in evil times. Your kid are being raised in, 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 in a time that it was not the time you and I were raised in. There will continue to write, be evil times. There are, your kids are being exposed to things that we were never exposed to. All right? So what are you going to do? Are you going to run from God? Are you going to teach your kids to run to God? What are you going to do? And then number two, run to God during times of trouble. Yes. And finally, number three, run to God during times of so every one of you will experience sorrow in your life. Every one of us will experience heartache. We will experience time of, of mourning and not necessarily because someone died. You know, you're going to go through times of sorrow. So number one, run to God when times are evil. Number two, run to God during the times of trouble. And number three, run to God during the times of sorrow. So don't run from your problems. Run to God. So with your eyes open, say, dear God, I pray don't take these problems away from me. Help me become better and help me in every situation to run to you in Jesus name. And everyone said, now, why did I help you? Why did I lead you in that prayer? Because you're not going to run to God because I tell you. You're going to run to God when you decide to run to God. All right? So let's read the Bible verse. We're in the book of Ruth, and we're going to immediately discover that there is a problem, there is an issue. And I want you to see how this father responded to the problem, and I want you to see what he did, and, and, and it was wrong what he did. So we're going to learn from this Bible passage how to run to God. Y'all ready? Yes. Let's read. In the days when the judges ruled in Israel, a severe famine came upon the land. So a man from Bethlehem in Judea left his home and went to live in the country of Moab, taking his wife and his two sons with him. The, na the man's name was Elimelech and his wife was Naomi. And their sons were Malon and Kilion, and they were Euphrates, Euphrates from Bethlehem in the land of Judah. So I want you to notice that it tells us two things. Number one, that there was famine. The second thing, they lived in Bethlehem, and they went to live in the land of Moab. It tells us the name of the father. His name was Elimelech, his wife, and then his two children. And then the Bible says, continue to read, come on. And when they reach Moab, they settled there. Then Elimelech died, and Noemi was left with her two sons. Her two sons married Moabite women. One married a woman named Oprah that has a TV show. <laughs> and the other woman was named Ruth. But about 10 years later, both Malon and Kilion died. Now, notice this is the sorrow. This is what Noemi is going to experience. This left Noemi alone without her two sons or her husband. All right? Now, when, if, if you're familiar with the Bible, the book of Judges... And the book of Ruth were written more or less on the same time period. 
So when we read this verse, notice what it says, in the days when the judges rule in Israel. This is happening, this story is happening during the time when judges ruled. There were still no kings in Israel. There was times, if you've, you've ever read the book of Judges. So there is something very interesting that the book of Judges, this is the last verse in the book of Judges. And this verse is connected to the story that we just read. And the Bible says, Judges 21, verse 25, read, come on. In those days, Israel had no king, and all the people did whatever seemed right in their own eyes. Come on, read it one more time. In those days, Israel had no king, and all the people did whatever seemed in their eyes. Okay? So what I want you to see is this. This is what I want you to see from this story. In this story, Elimelech and Noemi would painfully learn you should not run from your problems because things may only get worse. All right? So, so I want you to see the, the most painful experience or learning or uh, life lesson that they learned was they thought that by running and leaving Bethlehem and going to Moab, their issue was going to be resolved. But they soon discovered that their problem only got worse. And so many times when you make the wrong decisions in your life, you think your problem is going to be resolved. But sadly, most of us have to learn that our problems get worse. So when times are tough, And the days are difficult. Rather than running from our problems, we should run to our God. We should believe his promises and we should trust his plan. All right? So so the teaching today is simply as don't run from your problems. Run to God. All right? So number one, run to God when times are evil. So, so, So quickly, let me tell you the story. The Bible says that there was a great famine in the land. There was no tamales, no tacos, there was no food. Now, it's interesting that the writer tells us that this family was from Bethlehem. The term or the meaning of Bethlehem, Bethlehem means house of bread. There should have been bread there. But there was no bread. There was famine. And it's interesting that it mentions the house of bread. And it mentions Bethlehem. Because the bread of life, Jesus, was born in Bethlehem. So many times you leave where the provision is going to come from. And you go thinking there is going to be provision someplace else. Now... The Bible says that they left Bethlehem. If, if you know anything about geography, if you imagine the Dead Sea, imagine the Dead Sea. Bethlehem is north of the Dead Sea. Moab is southeast of Bethlehem. So if, if, if you see a map, you're going to see Bethlehem north of the Dead Sea. And it was, Moab was 50 miles south down so anytime you make decisions based on what you think is good, you're always going to go down. You're going to go the wrong way. Yeah, yeah. And this is what happened. Now, let me tell you why God didn't want them to go to Moab. Who is Moab? Where does the Moabites, Moabites come from? All of you know what incest is, right? Yeah. Incest is when a father has sexual relationships with his daughter and they have a child. That's unbiblical and that should never happen. Let me say that again. That's unbiblical and that should never happen. The Bible says that Lot was Abraham's nephew. And one day they separated from each other. And Lot went to two cities called Sodom and Gomorrah. God sent angels because he was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot and his family, Lot had two daughters. Lot had a wife. And the Bible says that the angels literally had to pull Lot and his family out of Sodom and Gomorrah. And the the, the commandment was this, flee and don't look back. 
And the Bible says as they were running, they were fleeing from Sodom and Gomorrah as God was destroying it. Lot's wife looked back and she became a pillar of salt. salt. All right. So that's why the Bible in the New Testament says don't look back like the, the, the wife. Anytime you look back, if you're going to look back, look back to what God has done for you. Don't look back to wanting to go back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. So the Bible says that she stays there. She becomes a pillar of salt. Miss Lot is no longer in the picture. And Lot's two daughters start talking to each other. He says, you know what? All the men were destroyed. Our because they were married. Our husbands stayed behind. They're dead. We're not going to have no children. So the Bible says they gave wine to their father Lot. And out of his drunkenness, he got, he had re sexual relationship with his two daughters. And the Moabites and the Ammonites were born. So if you're familiar with the book of Judges, the Bible says that the Moabites oppressed Israel for 18 years. Not only that, as Israel was going from, from Egypt to the promised land, they came through this land named Moab. And instead of letting them go through, they tried to stop them. So anytime you decide when you're going through a problem, you decide to go on your plan, you will always end up in the wrong place. And this is exactly what happened to Elimelech and his family. They wound up in a city that was birthed out of incest. Why do you think there's so much sexual things going on in, in, in the world, pornography and all of this? Because like never before, the devil is going to try to infiltrate the minds and the hearts, not only of us as adults, but of our children. Because if the devil can get them young, he will destroy them for the rest of their life. Yeah. All right? So, so, so here they go to a city that was birthed out of incest. But not only was it a city b born out of incest, it was a city that oppressed. So why are you going to leave The house of bread to go to a, press, to a place where you're going to be oppressed. All right? So the evil, this is where the evil comes in. This is where the evil comes in. The Bible says that in the times of the judges, there was no king over Israel and everyone did what they wanted. All right? Now, it's amazing that the name Elimelech means my God is my king. But Elimelech was living like God was not his king. And sadly, too many of us that call ourselves Christians, we want to live like God is not our king. And we make decisions based on how I think, what I see, what I want. And when you make, you and I make decisions based on what I want and what I see and what I think, and not de decisions based on Jesus, my king of my life, you will always wind up in an evil place and making the wrong decisions for your life and for your family. That's what happened to them. All right? So, Elimelech, his name means, my God is my king, but he was living like God was not his king. And Elimelech, in the story, it almost like, okay, let's applaud him. He was looking out for his family. But the truth is, he wasn't really looking out for his family because if he would have done, he would have ran to God and God would have told him not to go. So in your life and in your family, I can never dictate to you what decisions that you can make for your life. You're going to have to learn to trust God, to rely on God, and allow King Jesus to rule over you and to help you make the right decision. Because we, we, rather you say amen or not, rather you applaud or not, King Jesus' plans are always better than your plans and better than my plans. All right? So this is where the evil came in, where he did what he wanted. Now, where was the problem? It, it was a, it, 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 there was famine in the land. Now, please listen to what I'm about to say. Listen to what I'm about to say. Most of us as believers make decisions based on what's good for me instead of what is good for God and his kingdom. Because we are moved by our kingdom. But what I want, 
what I think is best for me, instead of what does God think? Where is God in all of this? Most of you will make financial decisions based on a little bit looks better on the other side. Now, please hear me out. God has no problem with you making more money. Let me say that again. God has no problem with you making more money. But when you make decisions based on making more money, what happens is you have more money, but find out you have less of God. And I have seen so many people make more money, but they lose their marriage. They lose their children. And sooner or later, they abandon their faith. Because every decision in your life, you set a precedent. Every little decision that you make is making, is, is, is molding you to make the major decisions in your life. So Elimelech heads out. And what he thought was going to be better for his family wound out to be the worst for his family. He dies. And leaves Noemi widow. Ten years later, both of the kids die. Yeah. Let, let me tell you what Noemi means. Let me tell you what their, the name of the kids mean. <laughs> Noemi means sweet and pleasant. Yeah. When she returns back to Bethlehem, she says, call me bitter. Because... Life had embittered her life instead of being sweet and pleasant. And now listen to what I'm about to tell you guys. If you keep running from God, life will embitter your life. Because only God can bring sweetness and bring pleasantry into your life. The moment ever, anyone, listen, 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 I've been a pastor for 33 years. I've been a Christian for 41 years. My childhood friends that grew up in the church, oh, I, I didn't grow up in, in the church as a kid, but when I was 16, every one of the kids that grew up with, with me at church and they no longer in church, they are bitter at life because anyone, I've seen people come to our church, I've baptized people, people have been part of the team, people have been life group leaders, some of them ended up in divorce, some of them are in jail. Everyone that runs away from God, life will embitter their life. Because there's no drug, there's no woman, there's not a car, there's not a house that can sweeten your life. There's no one. Only God can bring sweetness and only God can heal your heart. So when you're going through marital problems, when you're raising kids and they're acting like they're little devils, they only came from you and from me. All right, they're only resembling of how, what they've seen in us. In every situation, the answer is not to what not, is not a, to run from God. The answer is run to God. Amen. The answer is to run to God. And then, what do you do when sorrow comes into your life? Listen. I, I used I, I used to be a pastor and say, man, why, why are you crying? Why, Man, you should be happy. You should be on, on, on the mountain. And then, and then God allowed me to go through a lot of internal problems, problems with my kids. And like you, I've, I've experienced a lot of sorrow in my life. Last year, in, in the month of April, uh, a, a pastor calls. I've been wanting to meet this pastor for years. <laughs> He's a doctor, and I'm trying to lower my cholesterol level, and this guy's an expert in all of that. And a friend of mine that's a friend of his says, man, I'm going to Louisiana. I've been looking for this doctor, pastor, for four years. And my, and my, my friend says, you want to go with me to Louisiana? I couldn't make it. And he goes, okay, on Saturday, I'm going to call you so you can uh, meet him. And then it's up to you, and it's up to him if he starts being your doctor. I said, man, I just want to meet him. So... My friend's in Louisiana, Alexandria, Louisiana, and he says, hey, the doctor's name is David, all right? That's his name, David. If you know Spanish, his, name is, his last name is Remedios. He can fix anything. <laughs> so it's April last year. And my friend says, he, call, he texts me, he says, Pastor David, are, are you ready? I'm about to call you in 10 minutes. And he calls me, and I said, hey, what's up, Elias? 
And Elias goes, hey, I'm, I'm going to pass you the phone over to the pastor so you can meet him. The pastor didn't greet me, didn't say, hey, where do you live? What's your name? Uh, what city are you living in? Do you have family? Immediately, he began, to, he began to prophesy and he said this, pastor, I don't know you, but you are going through a season where there's a lot of subtraction in your life. There's a lot of subtraction in your life. And he says, there's people that are going to leave your church that you never thought that they would leave. He goes, but if you do not become bitter after the subtraction, you're going to see not only the addition, you're going to see the multiplication. No, no. I didn't applaud. I didn't applaud like you did. Because nobody likes to see subtraction in their life. Nobody. That was April. May, June. Every week, people would come and say, Pastor, I'm leaving the church. 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 You know what helped me? That God had already prepared me by telling me there was a season of subtraction. And the greatest subtraction was not the people left. The greatest subtraction that I experienced last year when in the month of August, my mama died. Yeah. Yeah. God had told me that I was going to go through a season of subtraction. So what do you do? Do I throw in the towel? Do I tell you, excuse, excuse my language, excuse my language. Y'all ready? Can y'all handle what I'm about to say? Everybody go to hell. Forget everybody. Let's go. Do I become bitter because people left? Do I become bitter because my mama died? Do I become bitter because all of this? What do you do? What do you do? What do I do? When you're going through sorrow, you run to God. You run to God. And this is what happened to Noemi. A famine and three funerals did not seem to indicate a time when God was at work. As you read the story... It almost seems that God has turned his back on them because the husband dies, the kids die. Everything seems lost. The death of three men in Noemi's life on the surface seemed to indicate all was lost. And as human beings, when we go through troubles times, when, when, when we go through sorrows, it almost seems everything is lost. Well, this story is only a story to prepare us what's going to happen in the New Testament. It was in three men, but Jesus, the Son of God, died on a Roman cross. And on the surface, everything seemed to indicate that all was lost. For Jesus, it was three days. And, and, and thank you for coming back because Jesus, we don't only celebrate the resurrection on Easter. Today, we're still celebrating that Jesus died and that Jesus rose from the dead. And God was not done with Noemi's life. God was not done with Jesus' life. And God is still not done with your life. There's another chapter is coming. And when you turn the page, the things get better. Because if you continue to read, we're going to see in the next couple of weeks, out of despair in her life came hope. Out of death came victory. And out of sorrow came joy. And out of death came life. So I don't know what you're going through. But I want to encourage you and I want to challenge you. It doesn't matter how dark it seems and how despair it is. There's still hope for you. And it doesn't matter that everything seems like there's been defeat in your life. Through Christ Jesus, there can be victory in your life, in your marriage, in your future. And out of sorrow, God can give you joy. And out of death, God can give you life. So whatever you might be going through, do not run from your problems. Run to God. Do not run from your problems. Run to God. Run to God when times are evil. Run to God in times of trouble. And run to God in times of sorrow. The answer is not to run from God. The answer is run to God. So... What are you going to do? Are you going to, are, are you going to be someone like Elimelech that is going to run from God? Or are you going to run to God? On Thursday. On Thursday, it was my wife and I anniversary. So I, I, I wanted to treat her like a queen. So I took her to Dairy Queen. <laughs> 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 
And the next day she wanted to treat me like a king, so she took me to Burger King. I'm, I'm joking, I'm joking. I, I take my wife and says, you take me wherever you, and I took her, excuse me, it might seem selfish, I took her to my favorite restaurant. It was not Happy Buddha, all right? I took her to my favorite, and obviously she likes it. So it's packed in the restaurant, it's packed. And a young girl, she said, I'm gonna be your waitress today. I said, good. And then she said, do y'all prefer to me speak English or Spanish? And we say, girl, talk to us in Spanish. So she takes her drink order, she takes her drink order, and then suddenly a other guy comes and goes, I'm gonna be your waiter. I said, okay, that's cool, that's not a problem. So the guy took care of us, we ate. My wife ate for our meal, praise the Lord. God is good. So we ordered dessert, and we're about to leave. We're about, I told the guy to give me my check, and the young girl comes back to talk to us, and my wife asked her, I thought you were going to take care of us. He goes, well, he said there was this table, and within a minute, right there in front of us, she doesn't know who we are. We've never seen her. She's never seen us. She starts bawling right there in the restaurant. She goes, I don't know why, but I want to tell y'all this. I came from Ecuador, I'm by myself, and I've had all these issues, all these challenges, and I don't know who to talk to. And she starts crying right in front of us. This morning she came to the Spanish service. Wait, 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 She came. Why? She was just needing someone to hear her out. My wife said, you know what? I know what you're going through. I felt the same way. I didn't know English, I, but God has helped me, and, I, and I've done two master's degrees. And she said, what? Yeah, I, I, I completed two master's degrees. I said, yeah, she did, and I helped her with her homework. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, right. Now, why do I tell you this, guys? It doesn't matter what you're going through. Yeah. The answer is not to run from God. Right. The oh. answer is to run to God. Yeah. Right? Listen, listen. Bethlehem means house of bread. New life through Jesus Christ. This is where we find the bread of God that feeds us, that strengthens us, that corrects us. So my question to you as you stand up, my question, I'm going to ask you to stand. My question to you is, which ones of you need to run to God? Who do you, how many of you need to run to God? You sure you need to run to God? So as a band is singing, I want you to come out of your, 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 your seat. And I just want you to come to the altar. And we're going to worship God. And then I'm going to pray for you. Come on.
he'd lost everything. Where did he, where did he run back to? He ran back to his father. How, how did his father receive him? With open arms. And the Bible says that the father ran to receive him. All right? So I don't know where you're at. The answer, if you run from God, run back to God. So before I pray for you, let me tell you this. Let me say this. And I say this as gentle and as sincere as I can. We're living in a time with it's so easy to make the wrong decisions based on how you feel and what you want in your life. It's so easy. I'm hurt. They hurt me. They said this about me. You know what? I'm going to leave this. I'm going to abandon this. Listen, guys. So many people are living cynical, bitter lives. And like never before, there's so many women, men, Christians. They're bitter at life. Because life threw things at them. Yeah, yeah. Raising their kids, financial issues, health issues. And many times... We as believers says, God, where are you? Why did you allow this? That was never, I thought, that was never, I didn't think my kids were going to do this. I didn't think I was going to do this. Listen, this is what I love about the Bible. Even when Elimelech made the wrong decisions, God's plan was still better. Yes. We're going to learn the next couple of weeks that God redeemed what seemed lost. And whatever has seemed lost in your life, don't stay in that chapter. There's, a one, there's another one coming. There's another chapter coming. God is not through with you yet. I said God is not through with you yet. God, you hear me say this and you say, ah, oh, pastor just says that truly. The best is still yet to come. The best is still yet to come. So let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Everyone say this prayer with me. Say, Dear God, you know exactly what I'm going through. You know every decision, right and wrong, that I've made. God, you know so many times. I just want to run away from things, the people in my life, and even you. I ask you for forgiveness, for allowing anger, frustration, and unforgiveness to develop bitterness in my heart. I pray that you operate in my heart. And instead of allowing anger and frustration, Allow gratitude to grow like never before. Come on, say, God, allow gratitude to grow in my heart like never before. Gratitude for the little or much that I have. Gratitude to the people that are around my life. Gratitude to you. Because even when I'm unfaithful, you still are faithful. Even when I'm doubting, you've never given up on me. God, help me not to make it a Sunday thing, but make it a lifelong goal of my life to run to you in every situation of my life. Come on, say, God, help me. God, help me to run to you in the good times and in the bad times. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Come on, say, yes, God. Come on, hug someone. Tell them, hey, run to God. Run to God. Thank you for being here. Come on, greet someone. We see you next week. Read the book of Ruth. We see y'all next week. Hug someone. Greet someone. Bless someone.